Right, yeah, welcome back. Okay, it's Sunday Tool Review again. Thank you for all your amazing support on these. I know you're enjoying them, and we certainly are too. Isn't that right, Ben? We do. We do indeed. Right, today I want to do something that's a little less destructive than the last few tool reviews. We're not going to be breaking anything today. Today's something constructive. I want to show you something that when we made the Dogwoods Garage Evolution Toolkit, there was an extras list. As well as the actual kit itself with all the relevant items for £200, we made some extras as well that were available. There's the torque wrench, various things like that. And also at the same time, there was a specialised Sealy crimping tool for crimping wiring if you're making wiring connections. And also these rather unique and quite cool soldered crimp connectors. So they're a crimp connector that not only is it crimped and solid, also it solders itself inside as well with heat shrink. So that's a pretty cool little item, but we put it in the kit. We did it with the Devil's Garage Toolkit, but I never demonstrated it, I never showed it. It was just there as a part number on the list. So while we're doing these tool reviews, I want to take an opportunity to show you how it works, show you how the crimp tool works. It's a far more reliable way to crimp wiring, to join wiring, because in the near future, I have a little job coming up. I may put some ape hangers on the Harley, which will mean extending the wiring inside the handlebars, and I'll need to be joining wiring in a nice, neat and reliable way. So here we are, Sealy crimp tool and soldered crimp connectors. Show you how they work. Okay, I'm just gonna bear off the ends of the wire ready and do a couple of little demos. And there we go. Just using a standard, ordinary, commonly garden wire stripper there. And there's loads of different tools for that. Okay, twist them out so they're good. Now, we've got some wires to show. And what these are, here we are, is these little connectors. I'm chucking them out on the bench. There we go. Have another look, Hen. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, they are a standard looking crimp connector. If we take one, make a red one. We take a standard crimp connector like that. They're not dissimilar, it's an inline connector. But what it has, you can see nice and close here, Ben. We've got two pieces of steel tube or aluminium tube inside where that will crimp the wire. And then on the outside here, this pink wire is heat shrink. So that will shrink over the top. But in the center, you've got this little tiny ring. And inside there is some pre-fluxed low melting point solder. So when you heat this, the solder melts and you get a crimped and solder joint. So rather than talk more about it, let's show you actually how it works. Right, as well as all of these um, connectors, which I'm going to use for the Harley, I've got some super small ones, which I'm actually going to be using inside the handlebars. They're going to extend the wiring that goes up through the bars, which I've got these little tiny super ones for really small. Uh, before I do that though, I want to obviously crimp them reliably. They've got to be crimped in a proper way. The regular ordinary crimps, these things that you see, they are okay, they do the job just fine and they're not expensive. You can buy these anytime and they're a kind of universal too. They strip, they crush, they've got wire crimps in the top, different sizes, but they're really just down to how much you crush them and how much you lean on that little tiny crimp. You can overdo it and crack them or you can not do them enough and they'll fall out. So I want it consistent. The job that I've got in hand, I'm gonna do the wiring that goes inside the bars of my Harley. I'm gonna put some ape hangers on it. So ultimately that wiring is gonna be quite slim. So I've got these little tiny connectors for that purpose. These ones are very, very small. I don't wanna be crimping them too hard because they're gonna be quite vulnerable. So I'm just gonna show you using the pink ones today, the bigger size, but for the purpose of getting that crimp crush exactly right, I've bought these proper ratchet crimping tool. I've never had one of these, I've always liked them. I've always fancied this set. They're not cheap, I've got a link underneath. But I thought if I'm gonna do the job, this is my bike and I want a nice job of it, I wanna make a nice job, so I invested in these. And what they do is they're a ratchet tool. So as they crimp, these are the crimping jaws in the end here, three different sizes. As they crimp closed, they go down by ratchet to the get to a point where they're as tight as they're gonna go. And if you then keep crushing, they undo. So again, just quickly, you see the little ratchet down here, this little tiny click. As that goes in, once you crush to a certain point, that flicks out the way and releases it. So what that ensures is that you can't over crimp. And that is a danger, like I said, with crimp, connectors, if you crush them too hard, you can crack them, and then effectively they're not very tight. They'll just let the wire go. So that will crimp them exactly as tight as they need to be. Keep pushing until it releases and it'll undo. So you know then that not only are they not crimped too much or too little, but also they're consistent, every single one, which is quite nice. So using that, let's connect this together. All you need to do is pop the wire in the end. So you've got your bared off wire twisted round, pop it in the end, 
push it all the way through and then just going to crimp that. You got the red dot on the end for the red piece and then just bring them in all the way in and it lets go and there's a nice solid secure crimp and we put the other one in again push it inside all the way in put the crimp tool on the edge and that will crimp it so every time you crimp with one of these you're getting a consistent amount of pressure on the job and it makes a nice secure crimp now, that would normally be as strong as it needs to be. That will do the job. That ain't going anywhere. It is known that crimped joints are more secure than soldered joints, so that's excellent. But as we said, conductivity is the issue. Crimped joints are not as good as soldered, and that's where these give you both. So you need some heat because it's a heat shrink temperature. It will work. That little piece of solder in the middle will melt just with a lighter. It doesn't need a proper soldering gun or anything. So I'm just going to put this little windproof lighter under it and just treat it like heat shrink all the way around don't get too close I think we all know how to use heat shrink don't we don't get too close because you'll burn it work from the middle outwards there it goes nice little heat shrink joint there we are do that side and there's a little bit of glue in there as well, which seals it all on top. And then now I can just concentrate from a little bit of a distance on the center part. That little ring of solder will get, it will gradually get thinner, not too close. It will gradually shrink in, in thickness as the solder flows over the wires. And the heat shrink drags it in and it all becomes one thickness. There it is. Job done. It changes in colour, that's the best giveaway. How's that? There we are, job done. And that's it. Right, there we are. That is lovely. See how strong it is. I said I wasn't going to do a demonstration on this one. Well, that's the test. That is nice. That's really strong. Nice. Now, there's one thing you can see when you come in close on it. You see how that has gone dark and shrunk in thickness compared to the an unused one. So you can see when you've melted the solder, it just goes a little tiny bit thinner and goes darker and then you've got that strength in there. And obviously the thing is, with any heat shrink, don't burn it. It's very important not to go burning in on that because if you, if you overheat it, the heat shrink shroud on the outside will perforate a little pinhole and then the solder will squirt out and that can be quite dangerous it can burn you, it can go in your eye, it can do anything so make sure you never overheat that it's very very important not to do so gentle heat from a distance take your time you won't do any damage if you take your time it's when you get in too close and you become impatient that you can damage it and then you've just got to cut it out and do it again because if the solder leaks out of that then obviously there's no integrity in terms of insulation. You're going to have that, that will be open to arcing out on things and causing electrical issues as well. So make sure when you've finished, feel it with your fingers. There's no roughness, no burning. It's very important with heat shrink never to overheat it because it's there for a reason. If you overheat it, you may as well not use it at all. So that's good. I'm very happy with that. I want to mention quickly the price on these. Obviously, they're not cheap. These come in at about three or four times the price of a regular ordinary crimp. These little ordinary butt connectors are about, if you buy them in small quantities from your DIY car store, they come in at about three pounds for a pack of 10, so you got 30 pence each. You can buy a massive bag of them, like a hundred or something, then you'll get them cheaper per piece. But how many of them do you ever need? Um, you know, I, haven't, I don't use many at all. So a bag of 25 of these is nearly 25 quid. They're almost a pound each. So it's quite a lot of money. However, they're a little bit of a mechanism, aren't they? You've got the little piece of uh, pre-flux solder in there and obviously the heat shrink on the outside so you don't need to buy a big box of heat shrink it's all inclusive so you kind of it's an all-round price so a pound each they're a lot of money but then I ask myself how many am I going to use I'm going to extend the bar the wiring inside the handle I'm going to put some a pangers on my Harley the wiring needs about eight inches put in it in length it's a little project for the future and I've got these little ones for that reason because when you look at that on there 
that is hardly any thicker than the original wire itself. I've used this thick speaker wire and that's hardly any thicker. That's really nice. So when I use the regular wiring inside the bars, these little ones, they're gonna mean that I can feed it in through the bars because it's nice and slim like. If you use these ones, you'll know what they're like. When you crush those, they go flat. They end up just flattening out. So that's also the reason to use these proper crimpers. It's a little box square in there, so it crushes it in a square, and you don't end up with an ugly flat thing that could potentially be cracked and then come loose. Because as soon as a crimp cracks inside, it's no longer tight, it just becomes loose and it lets the wire go. So these are a great way to make sure that the crimping side of the job can never be over tightened. You can't over crimp them and you'll also make sure they're crimped enough. So you can't, that's why they're useful and worth the money. And I say, I'll pop a link underneath to those. And this itself, as a result, I'm absolutely chuffed with that. I will be very happy to have a dozen little links like that inside my handlebars and there'll be no problem at all. Because remember, they're heat shrink, there's glue inside there, it's all completely sealed. And that's lovely and really, really strong. So I'm chuffed with that. Okay, now if there's anything else, Ben, what do you reckon? Well, it seemed to have worked. It does seem to work. I mean, it was a test, it was a review. The first time I've ever done it. Like I said, the most important thing is don't overheat it and you'll have an easy time. Very, very simple. And it is a DIY solution, very much. There might be those of you out there saying, be an electrician, do it properly, just solder it. Yes, I get that and you are right. To properly solder a joint to a high standard is obviously the best possible way to do it, but I'm not of that standard. And that is a great way for me to do it and get a strong joint that's got the conductivity of a solder joint at the same time. I love the combination of the two. And I'm gonna call it done, don't you think? I think so, enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday, folks. Link to everything underneath. Join us during the week for some more fun and games on the Fighter Build. It's getting fun now. Ride safe, see you next time.